So now that we've done all this, let's talk a little bit about just doing some basic color correction. And if you've never used the Lumetri color panel before, this is a, a, such an amazing tool. Again, it uses a lot of Lightroom styled controls, but you also have the power and flexibility to use input LUTs, creative LUTs, color wheels, curves, native vignettes, and more. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first thing we're gonna do there is we're going to switch over to our color workspace, and this will reveal the Lumetri color panel, all right? And back over to our project panel here. All right, so now we can just use, in fact, the cut that we did, or perhaps we'll even choose, if we went to our multicam, our multicam cut, and kind of use some of these shots here. All right, let's use the shot of Dan here. All right, so in the color workspace, you will see up at the top here, we have Lumetri color. And again, this was sort of a reimagined color workflow for video editors, where you have a whole different series of various modules that you can enable. The first being basic correction up at the top. So here's where if you had input LUTs that you wanted to use, you could implement them. You won't need them for this footage here, all right? And then we have a lot of the same controls that you'll typically find inside of Lightroom, including a white balance eyedropper. So if you wanted to completely change the white balance of the shot, we could choose the eyedropper here and we could say, okay, actually this is supposed to be sort of our neutral point white and kind of re-white balance the shot there easily. You've got your temperature here. So again, we could sort of you know, focus more on the warmer tones. We could cool off the overall shot very, very easily. Again, adjust the tints accordingly. And maybe we'll start doing something like this. All right, I'm actually kind of kind of liking that a little bit. I'll do a little tint adjust here. Then you've got exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows. So maybe kind of pop the highlights a little more. Bring down the contrast just a little bit. Again, you've got your saturation controls. And then you have your creative LUTs. Now we've got several dozen different LUTs in here that you can try, including a lot of film stock emulations. And if you kind of click through or cycle through these and select them, you can see this is using one of my favorites, the Fuji Eterna 250D uh, Kodak 2395. Just to give it a more sort of film-like aesthetic, you'll notice under creative, under adjustments, you've also got some faded film options here, again, to kind of give it a slightly more lower contrast feel. Here's also where you'll find sharpen, vibrance, and an additional saturation control, as well as some shadow tint controls. So again, we kind of want to go a little bit more into the blues and magentas here for the shadows and the highlights, a bit more into those earthy tones, just to give this a completely different feel. Now, at the same time, if we wanted to, you'll notice that you've got lots of monochrome options in here. So here's where we could apply sort of a monochrome look to this. Again, you've got complete flexibility and freedom with using these various LUTs. Let's go ahead and scroll down to show additional controls here. You've also got your reimagined curves here if you've never seen these inside of Lumetri. So if you wanted to give this kind of a little S pop, something like this to really kind of make the contrast pop a bit more, a little bit something like that. You've got your plottable hue saturation curve, your traditional shadow midtones and highlight color wheels. You've even got HSL secondaries. So let's say we wanted to take kind of the color of this orange here and change this into a more purpley magenta. I can go ahead and choose my eyedropper. Let's go ahead and select in here. Turn the mask on, it's showing you exactly what it is that we're selecting. Let's make some additional color selections here. So we kind of get all of that orange in there, show the mask again. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can refine that mask, so we can add maybe just a little bit of blur on there. We can denoise it as well. And now if we go down into correction, we can do something as simple as just altering our wheel here and let's adjust that tint all right and you can see that it's just adjusting the colors that we selected there so this is known as secondary color correction here's your before here's your after all right and if we go inside of our effects controls remember this is all entirely non-destructive if we go ahead and turn off lumetri this is the original shot whoops and our process shot okay so very quickly, we can really change the color and feel of that entire shot with the Lumetri color panel. And of course, all the way at the bottom here, as I mentioned, we're very glad to have the native vignette. Again, a lot of these shots are kind of dark in the corner, so you wouldn't necessarily use that style, but you could also choose different style vignetting here. You can adjust the midpoint, roundness, and feather. And if you've ever done this in Lightroom, it functions exactly the same way. So again, remember to go to the color workspace. Yours may look a little bit different. Remember that you can always find your workspaces under window, 
workspaces, color, and this will immediately give you access to all of the Lumetri color correction tools.